GED plus criminal record equals marriage? One of the storylines in the Give a Brother a Chance Black Community Framework is the young, beautiful black woman, whether she is done with her schooling or not, or has never began her schooling. She could be at any stage in her education and, you know, overall career. But she still marries someone who just has a high school diploma and is working at FedEx. There's many of you doing that. Some of your men have GEDs. And he also has an arrest record. For many of you, it's a minor record. Maybe he shoplifted as a teenager. For a lot of you, too many of you, the reason he has a diploma and is working at the FedEx or, you know, UPS, what have you, is because no local college would admit him because he has a violent record. Reminds me. of a relative this person got married in the early 90s to a person that had just gotten their GED in their early 20s and served prison for two years, but was maybe 10 years removed from prison when they got married. You hear all of these success stories on television. Oh, he left prison and became a minister. He turned his life completely around. He got his certificate. He got his GED. Now he has a beautiful family. If you know that he has a former prison record, I don't care how many therapy classes, yoga classes, um, church services they have at that jailhouse. I don't care how many community college credits he earned at the jail. If he has an arrest record and a GED, be careful. I've seen this pattern before. Yeah, there's all of these back-to-work programs, um, rec- programs to prevent recidivation, um, you know, bringing different community groups into the jail to, you know, inspire the men. And, okay, that works for a little while, but when they get out of jail, is he continuing to seek out some type of therapy of some form. And I'm not talking about going to church because church is political these days. I'm talking about legitimate therapy. As much as he can afford, as much as the family can afford, as much as possible. Black men do not like going to therapy, but they need it the most. Their HIV rates are the highest among amongst all male groups. You know, being a single parent is highest among, you know, them. The homicides in this country, 
um, are the highest among the black men. Like every bad metric group or every every social metric group, usually black men are the worst at it. Um, and that's not an exaggeration. Lowest educated of all sex and race groups in this country. Um, you know. I would caution. Dating and marrying the combination of GED plus jail. And the common notion is, oh, he turned his life around. Uh, like I said, if he if he is not doing therapy after jail, and most of them don't, it's not worth it. I don't care if he did turn his life around and now he's got an apartment and a steady job. I will still tell him no. He needs to do therapy. I have a relative now. He's in his 60s. Has the combination of GED and jail from decades ago. But the last therapy that he got was at the jailhouse decades ago. He went back to the church, got involved in the church, but he's religious. He's not, everything is everybody else's fault. It's never his fault. He's religious. He's not really, he's surface level. He's not really getting down to the bare bones of why he keeps getting divorces why, you know, relatives don't really want to talk to him as much. It's all their fault. It's never his fault. Why I don't really talk to him. It's all my fault. It's never his fault. Very religious guy. Surface level black church type of stuff. Never got therapy after those two years of of uh, state jail. Never got therapy after that. Um, those men need to sit down and really process what happened to them in jail. Even if none of that stereotypical stuff happened, just being in such confined spaces for that long stretch of time you're going to need therapy after that. And if you don't, it's it's going to wreak havoc on everybody around you. So many black women have such low self-esteem. You keep getting married to the GED plus former jail combo. And I really just do not you have to have really low self-esteem to to do that. You don't look at someone who's been in the state pen for years and they is it and think that that's marriage material. Oh, I'm going to marry him once he gets out of jail. Oh, that jail was 10 years ago. He's a different person. Meanwhile, you ignore warning signs. He shows even small warning signs. I don't care if he is now at your church. Warning signs. Do not ignore the warning signs. 
if you meet a guy like that, before you say I am due, I would, if I were you, talk to other women who were in your predicament that fell in love with an ex jailbird that so called got his life together. As them, as that older woman, do you still see any, you know, effects of him being in the jail, whether you're married to him or not? Do you still see that he's still affected by that? And see what they have to say. Uh, but don't just marry because you're desperate and you know that people are going to object so you don't really tell them the whole story if you really don't want your family in the in your business but you really want advice you can seek advice from outside of your family you could talk to your friend and say hey you know uh or maybe not your friend cause, because they might know your family. But you could talk to, you know, someone at your job. Someone walk to the community center. Tell them your predicament. And see if they can hook you up with somebody to talk to. Um, to get advice about said predicament. You know, et cetera, et cetera. Do what you need to do to get some wisdom about this. My general advice is no. Because black men leave prison and they just, the last therapy they get is in prison. After that, they don't seek it out on their own and haven't dealt with that trauma of, of being confined for so long. And you don't know if he saw beat downs in the jail or it could have just been regular boring days for two years, but. Just being confined for that long, I mean, you're going to need therapy. So let's read the story and then we will close out. C.W.B. Chicago. C.W.B. Chicago. Now charged with murder, Chicago man had a success story so moving it was featured on ABC News. Like too many young Chicagoans, Kevin... McMurtry, McMurtry dropped out of high school and then spent years struggling to find his way. He racked up three felony convictions between 06 and 12 for nonviolent crimes. In 20, as a new father at the age of 34, he decided to get on track. He joined the anti-violence program Chicago Cred and earned his GED. After raising his now three-year-old daughter alone, he recently married. Again, who are these low self-esteem women? Everything seemed to be going the right way. He had a success story so moving it was featured on ABC News. His defense attorney said Thursday after prosecutors charged him with first-degree murder. So he cleaned himself up and he still reoffended at the end of cleaning himself up. Let's again see why. I wish my granddaddy was here, McMurtry told the news after his GED graduation. He's been gone since 2019. His favorite words was, life goes on no matter what, life goes on. Kevin is an excellent father, um, said one of his life coaches, to the news station. He's been a great guy to have on your caseload. Yeah. But then he snapped and reoffended, right? Now McMurtry's life has changed again in the worst way possible. During a bail hearing on Thursday afternoon, Prosecutor McCord said McMurtry's wife was driving in the 1600 block of West 59th Street 
around 12.30 p.m. on March 4th when another driver cut in front of her. She had to swerve to avoid hitting the other car, which soon pulled over and parked. Passengers in his wife's car called McMurtry at work and told him what happened when his wife arrived at their home. McMurtry got behind the wheel with his wife in the back seat and another passenger up front. He allegedly drove back to where the other car had parked. Coincidentally, the other car was pulling out of its parking spot when McMurtry pulled up. McCord said McMurtry crossed the center line and drove straight at the other car, firing one shot from his pat from his driver's side window. The bullet hit the other car's passenger, 28-year-old Jamal Fields, and killed him. So after getting a GED, turning the life around, he ends up reoffending. Yeah, really haven't dealt with the demons that got him in the jail and the process of jail, you know. He didn't seek therapy. He didn't seek, you know, exorcism or anything after that. After firing the shot, McMurtry pulled a U-turn and turn and returned to work. Wow. Police arrested him on Tuesday during an interview with police. He allegedly admitted to leaving work, driving back to find the other car, and firing a shot with one of two guns that the front seat passenger had. I find this unfortunate because you're the kind of person who doesn't usually come before me on a charge like this. Judge uh, Riva, Riva Stava told McMurtry before holding him without bail. Like the person in my family, they left the two years of prison and became an ordained minister. Still an ordained minister, but people really don't want to be around him like that. He's kind of difficult, very religious, not really wanting to get too deep into the word because it'll expose um, God really expose him he just kind of surface level reading the bible and uh he prefers it that way and so you know people don't really want to be around him he's going on his third marriage like um you know this is that uh ged Plus jail equals marriage combo. And I wish you women would get some self-esteem and stop marrying into this combo. Just because you're a big dark girl doesn't mean you have to settle for less. And doesn't mean that there isn't somebody better out there who would take you. I see a lot of big, dark black girls married to white men who have the same college degrees that they have. You being big, dark, and black has nothing to do with your attractiveness. That just means that somebody else out there is is out there for you. If you're settling for something like this, that most black women, we would rather be with a light-skinned black man or a white guy. We admit it in our girl circles. It's like, because opposites attract. And so, but you end up settling for like Tyrone that you're not really attracted to and his IQ isn't that high. 
because you have told yourself that society doesn't see me as desirable because you fed into the BS that the community has 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 um, engineered you to believe. And it's so not true. How many white guys, like, they love a dark chocolate island girl and different sizes of dark chocolate island girls. Um, if you have a desire in your heart for a certain type of guy, don't settle for less because you think that that's all you can get. Your attractions, your natural inclinations are very natural inclinations. God put that desire on the inside of you because he has someone for you that likely fits those requirements and y'all are going to have a beautiful few decades of marriage. But if you don't get your confidence up and look yourself in the mirror every day and tell yourself that you are worth it, you'll never reach your God-given destiny.